It's nice to be here, stay in the stage. So welcome. So uh, how many of you knows about metamorphic testing before the lecture today? Two faces. How many of you, how many have you seen the film Good, Bad and Ugly? More. So I, I continue both in this, uh, in this uh, presentation. I, however, I will speak about test design. So, the second day I have a nice conference. And uh, I know that uh, all of you are working in a company where everything is perfect. Perfect agile. CMMI five and more. Everything is brilliant. Communication, perfect. C can you imagine? So you, you are working in a perfect company. So again, test automation. Brilliant. Um, documents, environment, life cycle, anything. But you are still here. Why? <laughs> because, because, because you, you, have, you have some bugs in your code. The question is, why? Why, why do you have bugs in a code in spite of your beautiful processes and, and so on? So, the reason is quite simple. You have inefficient test cases. So the question is, how can we, how can we write more efficient test cases? Some people think that testing is just paid phishing, which means that, uh, well, we try to catch a bug, and maybe we have luck, maybe not. And uh, when we have some bug, then, then uh, we are lucky, and uh, our company is happy. Well, that's, that's, that's the situation. So before I continue with, with a special test design technique, uh, let's define the test design which is uh, basically a procedure for determining test condition, test cases, and, uh, and test data during software testing. Um, it's ISTQB definition. All of you know it. When we consider the mentioned uh, ISO standard NX4 uh, describing the test design techniques, you see that uh, we have we have specification-based techniques, we have structure-based techniques, and we have experience-based techniques. Probably many of them are known uh, by you. Um, how many of you know uh, the equivalence partitioning and boundary value testing? All of you, all of you, very good, very good. But that's, that's okay. Uh, you see that there are the techniques here in a standard, uh, including metamorphic testing and others. Um, however, it's absolutely not easy to choose among the many possibilities. How can we, how can we cook? Okay, so you, when you, have a, you are a test analyst, the question is how can we, how can we choose the best technique uh, when you need to uh, determine uh, the best quality? There is an Easter egg, you see. Um, the problem is, basically, that uh, traditional test design techniques are coverage-based. Testers want to, to catch more fish. And uh, the traditional answer for this traditional question, problem, raise the coverage, use mo more fishing rods. Okay, so just more, more, and more rods, and, uh, and it's not enough. Unfortunately, it's not enough. Um, New techniques, better techniques needed, different approaches needed, um, for example, better fishing baits. In order to explain all of this, I choose a specific example, roller coaster. Um, the scenario, I think, is quite simple. Um, we have to test the people entry and the round release of a roller coaster. Um, at the beginning, I mean, at the, at, the, at the entrance, the height, the weight, and the three seats values are checked, and the entry is 
simply decided. Uh, you see the parameters, integers, and centimeter, and, and kilogram. So, we have three requirements. The first one, the height of the people is split into three categories. People with less than 120 centimeters are not allowed to enter. Quite simple, small people, two small people, unfortunately, not allowed to enter. People between 120 centimeters and 140 centimeters are allowed to enter with a seat extender. It's clear. Children's clear. People taller than 140 centimeters are allowed to enter. Okay, that's the first requirement. I think it's easy to understand. Requirement two. If all seats are filled, then the gate closes. So people should wait for the next round. Easy to understand. Requirement three. The visitor would enter and the total weight ex exceeds 1,000 kilograms, and the visitor must stay behind and the gate closes. So it's overweighted, I need to wait. Uh, when the gate is closed and the total weight of the people on the ride is between 700 kilograms and 1,000 kilograms, uh, 1, kilogram, then the ride uh, can go. Okay, so the ride can go. When the gate is closed and the total, total weight is less than 700 kilograms, then extra weight uh, need to be added and, uh, and then the right can go. Those are the requirements. I think easy to understand. Okay, let's see what happened. So the bad and ugly solution first. So we need to solve this problem. We need to test this program uh, somehow. First of all, um, I, ass I assume the CPH, the competent programmer hypothesis, which means that the program is close to the, the optimal one, close to the correct one. Okay, so not something else. It's quite important. Well, how can we solve this problem as a tester? The first ID, probably the good ID, the best ID uh, to determine the equivalence partitions. For example, via the classification tree method uh, you see here. Three parameters, height, weight, and the number of three seats. You need the possible uh, categories in, in, a, in the height and the weight and number of three seats. Okay, so it's quite simple to categorize. Okay. And now, how can we choose the test cases? That's the question. Um, we can, we can, we can, yeah, everything depends on the risk. Here in our case, let's see, yeah, it's a high risk because um, nobody knows what happened when something is bad. Okay, so it's a high risk. So we, can, we can state that uh, we have a high risk here. Okay, and in that case, uh, we can apply some, some, some techniques, linear techniques, non-linear techniques, uh, linear techniques, some each choice or base choice or this pair or kind of combinative testing. Or, or pass testing or, or something. Yeah, we agree that we have a high risk, so we choose the three point BVA, three point boundary value uh, strategy with, uh, with uh, combinatorial testing, so all kind of possibilities we, we, we try to test. Okay, so um, in that case, altogether we have, we have six times six times two. So it's 72 test cases. It's the strongest test set that we can determine. Uh, so free, again, three point BVA and everything with everything other. Okay, so 72 test cases. We try it and we hope the best. Okay, as a traditional tester. Uh, yes, um, here is the code, um, which uh, in Python, but unimportant. Full C is the competent programmer hypothesis, and of course we can we can feed the, the 72 test cases, and all of them are green. We are happy, but at least okay. All of the test cases are okay, so passed. So we are we are we think that uh, probably the software is okay. However, a test case, for example, a visitor. Uh, with uh, two meters and ten centimeter tall, uh, 140 kilogram weight, and the total weight before the entering is uh, is uh, 960 kilogram. So the guy want to enter, and uh, we we feed uh, this input data to the program, and uh, the program answer that yeah, 
can go. Oh, however, you see that uh, it's overweighted. So it's uh, something is wrong. Simple test cases and fail. However, it's a problem. I understand. What can we do? So again, uh, the traditional method. We tried everything, all of our best. Three point test, uh, three point BVA with, with 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 all combinations. All of the test cases were green or passed. And here, a situation uh, which which uh, which was dangerous. What can we do? Is there any reliable solution for that? Reliable means that. Uh, that uh, when there are problems uh, somewhere in the code, then we are able to find all kinds of problems. Just reliability means in, uh, in short words. Is it possible? Yes, we have such. It's called general predicate testing. How many of you heard about it? Two. Not much. Let's see. The good solution. Uh, you can. You can uh, apply your you can apply uh, your solution by uh, applying the free reliable tool uh, it uh, and, and test design org page. Let's see what happened now. First, um, we're approaching a black box solution, which means that uh, we know nothing, absolutely nothing about the code. Okay, no language, no code, nothing. We need. Well, we know only the specification. And uh, when we feed uh, the specification uh, based um, categories into the tool, you remember probably uh, specification. Uh, you see the height, the weight, and the three seats, and, and some lines describe the specification details. Then the general predicate testing um, tool um, reveals the bug. However, the solution will be able to reveal any kind of bug. Oh, what does any kind of bug? Yeah, it means that uh, all the possibilities, all the wrong codes would be able to, uh, to examine and, and the bug is revealed. Now, continue with the case that uh, we have a gray box type testing, which means that we know something about, the, about the, the, the design, I mean the developer design. We know at least that uh, the developer uh, should develop the code in a way that step one, handle the exceptional cases first, then a visitor is not allowed to enter, then handle the cases when a visitor can enter, and at the end, check the need for the extra uh, weight blocks. Okay, specification for the developer. Uh, when we know that the code is developed in that way, nothing more, no language, nothing, just this one, and then the tool results in uh, 18 reliable test cases. Reliability, reliability here means, again, that uh, any kind of faults would be able to reveal here. Of course, when we know even more about the code, we know we have some pseudocode, like here, that, uh, yeah, the, the, the developer needs to develop in that way the code. Then you see the input and you see the output of the tool. In that case, uh, we have six reliable test cases. Some comparison. Traditional BVA, three-point BVA with combinatorial uh, test case selection, 72 test cases all together. I mean, the cumulative design time, uh, 45 minutes. Yeah, uh, 15 minutes design, 30 minutes uh, expected output computation we need, um, and the result is non-reliable. Black box GPT, 25 test cases, 15 minutes uh, cum 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 cumulative design time, 5 minutes design, 10 minutes expected output computation, and the result is reliable. Similar is a gray box GPT uh, and, uh, and a white box GPT, more or less the same uh, cumulative uh, design time, and all of them, I mean, the bug revealing capability uh, means, that it means reliability here. Well, um, of course, I suggest you to apply the GPT in all safety critical um, systems. I think it's a must. Just imagine, this is the first, first uh, 
um, test design technique by which, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, in a specific context, clear, by which uh, you are able to reveal 100% of bugs. Okay, so it's never before. Such. Of course, during regression testing, you can reduce the number of uh, tests to be run by applying different levels of, uh, of the GPT. So, uh, choosing the right test design technique and test selection criterion is crucial. We know it. Tool support, of course, may drastically reduce the design time. So, I suggest you to apply any kind of tooling if, if you have. And uh, maybe the most important point here that uh, GPT is reliable for revealing any predicate fault. And, uh, well, the roller coaster example can be found at that homepage. Uh, tool is free. You can, you can use it if you want. And uh, at the end, uh, I hope I was able to help you in order to distinguish between the bad and good test design. And uh, basically, that was all. Thanks for joining. Thanks for coming. So thank you, too. And we still have some time. Brilliant. So we have so far four questions. What is combina combinative testing? Well, if you go to the site testdesign.org, there are blogs there about GPT and other kinds of uh, new test design possibilities. And uh, you can find all of the needed information. You can, you can buy the books uh, about it. So uh, you can reach it if you want. Again, the starting point, the testdesign.org uh, page. And uh, yeah, you find everything there. OK, where can we find more information about GPT and how to use or apply it? Yeah, yeah, I answered. Uh, yeah, how to apply, yeah, well, uh, there's a tool there. So uh, you need to learn how to use the tool. It's quite simple. Uh, the learning time is maybe five minutes. Uh, so, well. OK. Shouldn't the, roller co shouldn't the roller coaster example related bugs caught with static testing techniques? You can bugs also see it here if it's static easier. Testing techniques. Um, basically, the GPT technique is uh, for black box uh, um, test design. However, uh, it can be applied for, for white box uh, um, cases as well. Not easy to answer this question. Not easy to answer. Um, I would say no, uh, but well, we need to research a bit more. Maybe something can be done, but the definite answer is, uh, is, is no. Nothing, to, uh, nothing, nothing much to relate. OK. How is GPT reliable if total weight is less than 1,000 or temperature equals 23.42? Well, nice question. GPT works in a way that, uh, that uh, we have a predicate variable, I don't know, variable one smaller than constant. Okay? Uh, you can, as a developer, may miss something. The junctor is smaller, instead of smaller, smaller than equal to. Or the 100 may be 101, or decimal comma is uh, something different. Okay? Um, GPT able to reveal all kinds of all kinds of, uh, of bugs here so when you miss something uh, I can catch it but not just this one but we have not just a simple similar um, variable smaller than something and similar and similar but the set of this we have a set of this and the algorithm try to find the optimal test uh, data selection which is still reliable and uh, as minimal as possible uh, well, I, I do not want to go into the details about the algorithm you can find in a book if you are interested in. Okay, so we have not just a test, a test uh, uh, data selected some way, but uh, we have a minimal set. Minimal means that, well, almost minimal, because uh, I was not able to prove the minimality, uh, but I was able to prove that it's very close to the minimal in a mathematical sense. 
Okay. Are there situations where combinative BVA testing can be more appropriate? Uh, combinative BVA testing. Uh, well, um, I think the roller coaster example was uh, a small answer for this. So we had something. We have uh, three classes, uh, some some categorization inside, uh, all combinations, and still not reliable. Of course, you can find similar problems uh, in your everyday life. So um, yeah, we had. We had many, many cases. We, an we analyzed many cases uh, regarding this, uh, but uh, well, uh, these were small examples just to show uh, the strongness of the method. Um, probably we need to to um, apply it uh, in a, in a very huge, very, very I don't know, uh, common problems. Uh, but well, it's later. Okay, so, but it can be applied, of course, I know. The question is the scalability. Okay, one more. Shouldn't the roller coaster example related back be caught with the static testing techniques? I think there's a word missing, but... Of course. Of course. Of course, you can. You can find. Uh, when you see the code uh, by review, uh, you can quite easily check that, yeah, that, that's the problem. Of course. Uh, however, it's one page example. Uh, you imagine you have, uh, I don't know, two million lines of code example, and please try to find a bug. Yeah, of course, of course you can, but, uh, but uh, it's, I think it's uh, as fast as the, the review and, uh, and can, can, can be scaled. Okay. Can GPT find the bugs made by testers? Yes, very good question, yes. So the, the Oracle problem is, uh, uh, it means here that uh, when you miss something uh, in, in, our, in our tool, then uh, you see that something is wrong. Yes, you can find. So that's the strongness of this method. Yeah, thanks. You, nice question. <laughs>